Yeah, very good morning or very good evening to everyone, depending where you are. Uh, my name is uh, Kamesh Namaduri, uh, Professor of Electrical Engineering at the University of North Texas. So we are organizing this as part of uh, IEEE Vehicular Technology Society, and this is a webinar series on on advanced air mobility. So uh, we had one presentation uh, for during the month of March, and this is the second in the series. Uh, and this is given by Professor Rui Zhang from, from uh, National University of Singapore. Uh, I will just give one sentence that summarizes his accomplishments. Uh, he is a IEEE fellow, uh, which is uh, given to very few people. You know, it's a, it's a fractional percentage of uh, IEEE uh, society. And then the topic uh, is accessing from the sky, UAV drone communication for 5G and beyond. And Professor Zhang is, uh, is an expert in this sub subject matter, expert in this field. So I invite uh, Professor Zhang to start the presentation. Thank you. Okay, uh, thanks, uh, Kames, for a very kind uh, invitation, and uh, it's also my pleasure, okay, to uh, give this talk um, on our recent uh, research on UAV uh, or drone communications. So in this talk, I'm going to uh, share with you uh, some of the recent uh, uh, research activities uh, in this, uh, I think it's very exciting uh, new area. Uh, which you can see from the title of my talk, uh, Accessing from the Sky, uh, UAV Drone Communications uh, for 5G and Beyond. So in this talk, my focus is mainly on uh, how to uh, enable UAV communications uh, in future wireless networks, uh, in particular 5G and beyond, for example, 6G. So this is the outline of my talk today. Uh, first, I will give you a introduction <clears throat> on uh, what is the motivation and what are the main benefits for integrating UAV and drones into uh, future wireless networks. And uh, in particular, I want to highlight right, what is the new uh, challenges from the perspective of communication system design as compared to traditional terrestrial communications. You know, right, for cellular system from 1G to uh, 5G today, uh, the main focus though, is to uh, enable coverage for terrestrial users. But now UAV, uh, you can consider there's a new type of area users and how to enable their communication with the cellular uh, networks uh, is a new problem. And uh, we have many challenges. Uh, and in this talk, I'm going to focus on uh, two main challenges in my opinion. Uh, one is, uh, <clears throat> how to uh, design the UAV trajectory over time uh, to maximize or optimize its uh, communication performance with the ground base stations or ground uh, terminals. Well, the second issue uh, is that, you know, by integrating UAV into future wireless network, uh, it may cause a, a new type of uh, interference, which is called air to ground interference. And uh, that may uh, degrade the performance of the existing Okay, terrestrial users in cellular networks. And in my opinion, this is a, uh, also a very challenging issue and we need to tackle it, right? Otherwise, uh, we cannot guarantee, right, when the UAV added uh, into the next generation uh, wireless network, uh, all the users will be happy, right, with their, uh, their uh, uh, experience. And then uh, finally, I will conclude this talk and point out some uh, new directions uh, for future work. So uh, we already know, right? Uh, UAV drone have uh, many uh, uh, applications, uh, you know, that's related to our daily lives. Uh, for example, you know, the very known uh, ones include the area for photography, okay, the inspection uh, using UAV for the power line in some remote areas. And the recently, uh, there's another popular one is the drone delivery for package and then other applications, for example, precision agriculture and so on and so forth. And also uh, at the, uh, this page, I also show uh, some of uh, important applications for UAVs uh, in communication uh, systems. Uh, for example, uh, one uh, typical use of UAV is for traffic offloading. 
So in this case, we can consider UAV as an area of the station, okay, and uh, help the you know to to provide a wireless access for uh, uh, some ground users, right? And the main purpose is to help offload you know the ground base station, right? In in some uh, scenario, for example, maybe the ground network has already get uh, very congested uh, when you have a very high density of users, so we can. Uh, deploy the, uh, the area uh, UAVs as temporary uh, base stations uh, to um, uh, uh, enhance the, the, the cellular network uh, performance. And another scenario is, uh, for example, when you have uh, base stations, two base stations, they need to uh, have a backhaul. But you know, in this case, uh, the only possibility is that you, 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 it's for wireless backhaul. And in this scenario, we can also deploy UAV as a mobile relay, and then can help establish, uh, you know, uh, backhaul links uh, to connect these two remote uh, base stations. And there are other applications, for example, uh, uh, in the IoT networks, when we have uh, massive IoT devices, for example, sensors, and we need to collect their data, you know, from time to time, uh, you know, uh, to the cloud to do some analysis on them. Uh, in this case, uh, you know, a very efficient way is that we can dispatch UAVs, okay, over uh, a given area, and the UAV move around, it will collect the data from the IoT devices, and this is more efficient uh, uh, than deploying the fixed base stations uh, to achieve the same uh, objective. So, uh, I want to uh, first... Uh, um, uh, Introduce, you know, what are the, you know, the typical, uh, uh, you know, uh, communication requirement for UAVs, right? Actually, if you look at, you know, the specifications, uh, for example, from ITU, you can find that there are actually two types of uh, communication uh, data. Uh, one is called the control and non-payload uh, communications or CNPC. Uh, we, we, for which uh, the main purpose is to enable some very essential control, okay, signaling between uh, the base station and the ground uh, pattern. So typically uh, for CNPC data, uh, the data rate may not be very high, uh, but uh, it has a very stringent requir uh, requirement on the reliability and the security, as well as uh, uh, the latency. Uh, the other type of uh, uh, data is uh, is called the payload uh, uh, communication data, and which depends on the application, right? For example, if you use the UAV for area photography, and the UAV may need to send back, you know, the the high definition video uh, to the ground uh, pattern. So in this case, right, the application data, the payload data will be uh, the video streaming. Uh, if you use the UAV as a base station, then uh, the, base, the, the payload data will be uh, internet-related uh, data. So compared to CMPC, uh, payload uh, communication data typically has much higher data rate, uh, but may have a less stringent requirement on reliability and or latency. So here I showed uh, some typical uh, 3GPP uh, requirement for UAV communication. Uh, you know, for both the downlink and uplink, right? So downlink is from the base station to UAV, while the uplink is from the UAV uh, to the base station. And as you can see here, um, you know, for the downlink, right, uh, the CMPC, which is the control data, has a very stringent uh, requirement for the latency, right, which is uh, need to be uh, below uh, 50 milliseconds. While for the uplink, you know, uh, for the payload data, then the data rate will be much higher, right? It can be up to 50 uh, megabps. And I also uh, want to give some examples provided by China Mobile requirement for typical UAV payload uh, data. As you can see also, right? If you use the UAV as an area access point or base station, and then the payload data rate will be uh, very high. But if you some other applications, like for example, the drone fleet show, which is only uh, uh, depends on uh, the CMPC, uh, the control uh, signaling, then the latency requirement is the lowest, right? It's 100 milliseconds. So the next, I want to share with you uh, some of the existing wireless technology to enable UAV communication. Actually, 
there are three main types of them. Okay, one is the, the so-called direct UAV ground communication. Uh, typically, they're using Wi-Fi in the I license spectrum, for example, 2.4 gigahertz. And uh, uh, the other type is uh, to deploy the so-called flying air hot networks, where you have a multiple UAVs that form a, a, a cluster. And uh, you know when uh, they want to communicate with a ground control station, the GCS, uh, they may uh, invoke uh, you know uh, uh, you know multi hop communication, right? For example, uh, you know a remote uh, UAV may need to send the data via multiple uh, relaying uh, UAVs and finally reach the destination, right? The GCS. Uh, another uh, choice is to uh, use the satellite right, communication, and which can communicate right uh, directly uh, with the uh, the UAVs regardless their location. On the other hand, you can also think of the satellite as a relay, and that will relay the data from the UAV to the ground uh, control station. Right? So there, these are the three main existing technologies to enable wireless communication. Well, the new and emerging approach is to uh, use the existing cellular network to enable UAV communication. So this approach is called a cellular connected UAV. Right. The main motivation is that we already have well deployed the cellular network, right, which is, has very reliable backhaul, and it's usually used the optical right uh, communication, and also we have very reliable wireless access, right, in today's five G, for example, right. So the the ground pattern, right, it can control a UAV, even if it is a distant away. I mean, it's outside the visual line of sight of the the ground pattern. Uh, but the, the it can UAV uh, the 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 ground pattern can still uh, effectively communicate with the, the drone or UAV user by uh, sending the data to the to the cellular network right the base station and then use the uh, cellular backhaul to relay the data to another uh, base station which is nearer to the drone user and then finally send the data over the wireless link to the destination uh, drone. Okay, so you can see that by uh, engaging um, uh, and exploiting the existing cellular network, we can also achieve you know ubiquitous uh, communication with the UAVs uh, all over the, the, the space. Right? So here I compare the advantages and disadvantages of the existing technology and the new approach of uh, using cellular network to enable uh, UAV communication. Well, due to the time constraint, I won't uh, read all of these lines here, but I just want to uh, maybe emphasize if you use a direct uh, Wi-Fi based communication between the ground pattern and the, the UAV, uh, the main uh, drawback actually is the, you know, the limited the range and the data rate. And also the link may be very vulnerable to interference because you know Wi-Fi operates is still called the uh, ISM band, right? So that is very vulnerable uh, to, to channel interference. Well, satellite, the advantage is that it can achieve a global coverage regardless of the UAV location. But the problem is that uh, it's more costly, right, compared to other techniques. And also, uh, you know, the satellite terminal is typically uh, more have uh, a much heavier and more bulky and, and also more energy cons uh, consuming compared to uh, the, the, the satellite mobile uh, terminals. And the, maybe the most serious problem is that the high latency, right? Because for the satellite to, to relay the data from the UAV to the ground control station, usually uh, the round trip delay will be much higher than uh, the other techniques. Well, the ad hoc network, ad hoc UAV network uh, is very robust, okay? And also can support high mobility of the UAVs. But the problem is that the spectral efficiency is very low because they need to uh, engage in multi-hop, right? Multi-hop communication. And so, uh, you know, uh, you may also have the problem that the intermittent connectivity, right? Now, maybe UAV cannot find a, 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 a neighboring UAV in its vicinity, right, for relaying the data. And sometimes the how to solve the real-time, uh, you know, routing uh, uh, solution, right, for uh, dynamically uh, varying uh, UAV positions is also a challenging problem to solve. Well, if you use a cellular network, of course, the advantage is that it's easier to achieve, uh, you know, almost ubiquitous accessibility for the UAVs. And also the cellular communication performance today is the most superior, right, compared to the other uh, three uh, uh, benchmark schemes. 
but of course, I mean, the cellular network is not truly ubiquitous, right? In some remote areas, for example, over the sea or you know, in some de uh, desert area, uh, it, uh, it, may not, it may not have the cellular coverage yet, okay? And, and another issue is that if we use the UAV, uh, in the cellular network, it may cause the interference to existing terrorist user. And this is a, a important point later I will further elaborate. So I can envision that in the future, uh, you know, the UAV network will be uh, maybe, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know uh, integrated uh, uh, one, right? That means that we, we may not have only one single technology, uh, to enable UAV communications, right? We may have cellular network, okay, which is, for example, in the urban areas that provides, you know, very good coverage and superior performance for UAV communication. But in some remote areas, we may leverage on, uh, you know, the satellite or, or the UAV ad hoc network, right? Such as we have uh, integrated air ground uh, architecture uh, for the wireless network uh, to enable uh, ubiquitous uh, UAV communications. So in the sequel, I will mainly focus on uh, you know, how to integrate UAV into the cellular network, right? because this is an emerging a new technology. And here, I just want to uh, you know, highlight that actually there are two types of uh, uh, applications for UAV. One is the, the so-called cellular connected UAV. Right? In this case, the UAV is considered as a new type of area users or terminal. You can think about kind of flying around the mobile phones, right? Over the air, they want to communicate uh, with the ground pilot through the, the back, the, the satellite network, right? So typical applications is to, for uh, CMPC, uh, you know, some payload data like video uh, upload and the edge computing is uh, means that, uh, you know, the, uh, the base station, the ground base station can provide some such service like edge computing and even localization for UAVs, right? In typical some, uh, uh, areas where the GPS is not available. Well, the other paradigm is called the UAV assisted communications. This is more traditional, right? Um, it is in this case, the UAV is used as an area communication platform. I mean, you can think about their, you know, uh, the base stations are relays over the air and their main job is to help, uh, you know, um, establish uh, communications with the ground terminals. In particular, uh, uh, you know, for cases that either the ground network uh, malfunction or is highly congested, right? So you can think of typical applications as area base station, AP relay, you know, the IoT data harvesting previously I mentioned, and even you can use such UAV for other purposes like a wireless power transfer and also provide localization, but in this case it's for the ground uh, terminal. So you can think that uh, you know integrating UAV into future wireless network like 5G and 6G, uh, in my opinion, all right, uh, actually is a, is a win-win technology for both cellular industry and also uh, UAV industry, because uh, uh, from a UAV perspective, uh, you know integrating UAV into 5G and 6G can significantly improve the UAV communication performance, right? For example, you know, in 5G and 6G, we have many advanced features uh, for communications like URLC, right? For very secure, uh, reliable CNPC uh, communication. We have EMBB, you know, that can support real time, you know, ultra high definition video payload. And uh, we also have MMTC D2D that can enable UAV swarm communications and networking. And the other functions of cellular right, network, like cellular positioning, a massive MIMO, you know, edge computing, and all of them can uh, significantly improve uh, the, uh, the UAV communication and also localization and sending computing, you know, all of these aspects, right? So they will help enrich more uh, UAV applications, right? Enable them in the future. Well, on the other hand, right, UAV can also bring uh, opportunities for cellular uh, network, right? Because uh, UAVs, you can think about as a new type of area users, right? So that will definitely uh, broaden the horizon for uh, the business models, right? Uh, you know, uh, for the future cellular network. On the other hand, uh, UAV can also uh, serve as area uh, communication platforms. 
right? That that will be able to uh, provide a kind of robust and more cost-effective cellular recovery. So you may wonder that, right? Despite uh, all of these advantages for UAV uh, communication uh, for in in the future, five G and six G, but from a research perspective, right? What are the new challenges for UAV communications as compared to the well studied terrestrial communication, right? In the fast maybe uh, four or five decades already. Well, uh, I think uh, you, you need to uh, think about, you know, what are the unique uh, characteristics for UAVs, right? And to um, uh, derive, you know, what are the, the new uh, challenges for, for UAV communications. So here I list down some of the, the unique characteristics for UAV. For example, high altitude, right? So UAV usually flies at much higher altitude than compared to the ground base station or terminal. And, and we know, right, when, when you increase the altitude, right, typically, right, the UAV will have a higher chance to have a line of sign. That means it's clear and there's not any obstacle link with the, the ground uh, base station or terminal. And also UAV has very unique uh, features that it can move flexibly over the 3D space, right? Which is different from the terrestrial user. Usually the terrestrial terminals are confined, right? In the, in the given area, right? Which, you know, cannot move freely right, in, the, in the 3D space. But however, UAV also have a very stringent constraints on its size, weight, and power, the so-called swap constraint. And uh, that means that UAV typically have very limited payload, okay? And also the, the onboard battery. So it's endurance, that means the flying time for commercial UAVs are very limited, right? Now, typically it's below one hour. So when we design UAV communication and, and later, you know, trajectory design, we have to be very careful, uh, you know, uh, for the energy efficiency issues, right? Because uh, if uh, consume too much energy for the UAV, then the UAV endurance time will be significantly reduced and that will limit the UAV applications. So in this talk, due to the time constraint, I will mainly focus on probably, you can think of one opportunity and one challenge, right? In terms of opportunity, I will talk about how to design the UAV trajectory, okay? To optimize its communication performance with the ground base stations or terminal. Well, one challenge is that, you know, as I mentioned before, is that how to resolve the very severe, the air terrestrial interference issue, right? If this problem, uh, is not tackled uh, uh, efficiently, that, then we are, we are not able to, you know, integrate UAV into the future cellular network because we will cause too much interference to existing uh, users. Okay, so this is the, uh, uh, what I'm going to talk about next, right? Uh, the two main challenges. And the first, I will talk about trajectory optimization for UAV assisted communication. So in this case, I mainly consider UAV as area based station or relay. Okay, and uh, I'm going to design a uh, trajectory and to optimally serve uh, the ground uh, users, right? I want to start with the example uh, to, uh, it's kind of a toy example, by the way, but to give you some insights, you know, how we can explore UAV mobility uh, to improve the, the communication link. Uh, uh, performance. So the scenario is very simple, right? We have a ground terminal and the UAV base station uh, uh, needs to support, okay, it needs to communicate with it. And so, uh, you know, the UAV flies horizontally closer uh, to, the, uh, to the ground terminal. Well, uh, in this way, actually, uh, the UAV achieves two gains, right? We call it here double gains to improve the channel quality. On one hand, you know, when the movie flies closer to uh, the ground terminal, right? We know the, the distance between them reduces, right? So the, we know the signal power, uh, you know, uh, uh, decreases, right? Uh, over distance, right? Incre when the, increase, uh, the distance increases, right? So uh, we can see, right, this way, right? We, we can have shorter link distance, right? That means that we will have less uh, power loss, right? Uh, propagation loss for the wireless signal. And that will help improve the received signal power, right, of the mobile terminal. Well, on the other hand, uh, based on some empirical observation, uh, if it, the UAV moves horizontally closer to the ground terminal, then the, 
uh, you know, the, we call the, the, the angle theta here, right? We call the elevation angle, right? The theta here uh, actually becomes a line, right? And, uh, you know, based on the empirical mod channel model is that if the theta, the elevation angle increases, then you will have a higher probability for the UAV to establish a line sending uh, with the ground terminal, right? You can think of the extreme case, right? When theta equal to 90 degrees, then the UAV is directly above the ground terminal. Then when the, the channel is the, is the best condition. So you can see, right, by using this very simple example, by moving the UAV closer to the ground user, and by combining the double gain I, I mentioned previously, then you can get uh, up to 40 dB receive the signal power gain for the ground terminal. Now, if you work in the wireless communication uh, area, you will know, right, existing wireless technologies, uh, it's very difficult for them to achieve such high uh, ISO gain, right? For example, if you use coding, right, if you can get a 2 dB gain, that's already good enough. If you use uh, beamforming, right, if you get a 5 dB gain, that is already good, very good, right? But here you can see by just move, you know, the, the base station closer to the uh, user, we can get uh, up to 40 dB gain, right? Which is very difficult to obtain by other uh, existing wireless technologies. So this motivates us to study, uh, you know, the general uh, uh, framework for UAV assisted communication. So as you can see here, what I list here, are all the classical fundamental uh, communication channel models, right? And uh, in reality, you may have combinations of them and uh, that will be more complicated, but here you can see, right, some of the fundamentals models. Uh, the, 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 you can think of that, they are building blocks. You know, for example, we use the UAV as a relaying, uh, you know, that means it will support a destination, uh, a source on the ground uh, and to send the data to UAV and then forward to another remote uh, destination node on the ground. And we have the downlink channel, that means the UAV will send the uh, signals uh, independently to multiple ground users. And another case for it is called a multicasting. That means the, the UAV sends a common information to all the ground terminals. Well, the reverse direction was called uplink, right? When the ground terminals may send their independent message to the ground, uh, sorry, to the UAV uh, uh, base station. Uh, for example, in the IoT data harvesting application I mentioned previously. And more complicated one will be the interference-based channel model. That means there are multiple uh, uh, the UAV base stations and they cooperatively serve the users on the ground over the same time and frequency resource. And in this case, you know, they may cause interference between uh, the different uh, transmissions uh, at the same time and the frequency. So uh, we can now uh, use the, the traditional uh, communication uh, network performance metric, right? For example, signal to interference plus noise ratio, SNR, you know, the outage coverage probability, communication throughput, delay, spectral energy efficiency, and so on and so forth. So all of those are very well known existing metric for wireless communication network. But the only difference now is that if we model them in the UAV communication scenario, they all becomes variables of the UAV location or the location over time. That is, that is called the trajectory, right? For example, if you see uh, the, the figure on the left, when the UAV transmitter, right, send a data to a ground receiver, okay? The direct channel, you know, uh, power is related to this transmitting UAV's location. Now, previously at the toy example I showed, right? I show you already, right? If the if the the this UAV transmit moves closer to the to the ground terminal, then the channel power becomes higher. However, if you have a nearby UAV that also sending the signal that will cause interference over the same frequency and time, then this interference, okay, uh, will contribute to the SNR, right? Signal to interference plus noise ratio. Uh, that will determine the, the ground receiver's communication quality. But this interference channel power is also depends on what? Also depends on uh, this interfering UAV's location or its trajectory over time. So I can see that, right? Uh, you know, this motivates us to revisit or reformulate uh, the communication network, uh, you know, performance optimization problem. 
Now, in terms of the joint trajectory of the UAV, traje UAV trajectory and the communication optimization. Okay, so all of this kind of problem, you know, can be formulated in this very general form that it will maximize uh, utility. Utility can be any of the performance metrics as I shown in, in the previous slides. And there, in general, the utility, communication utility is a function of the UAV trajectories. I, here I use QT to represent. Although here I just show a single UAV, but you can also imagine in general, QT is a vector. Well, each entry uh, you know, represent one particular UAV's trajectory over time. Well, RT represents the traditional communication resource allocation, for example, power, bandwidth, and so on. So we want to jointly design the UAV trajectory QT and the communication resource allocation over time RT to maximize the communication network performance or the utility function U. Okay. However, we are subject to uh, constraints, right? For example, one type of constraint I call FI, right? That means the ice constraint, you know, which is only uh, depends on the UAV trajectory. So we call trajectory constraint. You can imagine these constraints as the traditional uh, uh, constraint that apply to UAV mobility, right? For example, there are speed constraints, there are acceleration constraints, you know, there are, you know, the obstacle uh, a collision or why they speak, uh, you know, among the UAVs and so on and so forth, right? So they only related to the UAV trajectory, okay? Well, the, the other type of constraint I call GI, which is a traditional communication resource constraint, right? Like power, like bandwidth allocation. Well, the more challenging one is the new type of constraint, which I call the couple constraint. Well, uh, given by HI, right? For example, the previous slides where we have the signal to interference noise ratio, right? Let's say we want the SNR of each ground user is to be greater or equal to that certain threshold. Then we will find that this constraint will relate to not only communication uh, resource allocation, RT, like power bandwidth allocation, it also depends on the UAV trajectories, right? The locations, QT. Okay. So this kind of couple constraint is mostly difficult to cope with in, in our in, in uh in, in, in the way we, we solve this uh, you know this optimization problem. And another challenge for this optimization problem, you can see that. All the variables QT and RT, they are continuous time variables, right? So we know, right, continuous time variable means that, you know, theoretically you have infinite number of them, right, to optimize, right? That, that's not feasible, right, to, uh, to optimize in, uh, with finite time. So uh, this is the, as I said, there are two main challenges. One is the coupling of the design variable, right? QT and RT, the UAV trajectory and the communication resource allocation. Another challenge is that the continuous time variables to, to optimize. So how to solve these two challenges? So first I want to uh, uh, introduce the approach to the, the so-called discretization. That the basic idea is that this, this optimization problem, right? Uh, the, the design variable that continues over, uh, over continuous time is too difficult to, to optimize. So the first we need to discretize, right? This problem. Right. In particular, we need to discretize the UAV trajectory. But how to do this discretization? Right? Actually, there are two general ways to do it. One is called the time discretization. The other one is called the past discretization. Of course, this is a two basic one. Right? You can also build more advanced one by combining them. Right? But here, due to a time constraint, I won't elaborate. So I just want to uh, describe you know, what is the time discretization. It's very simple. Time discretization is that you divide the timeline into equal time slots, okay? Let's say uh, the interval is, is delta t here. And then we uh, assign the UAV location as a function of this discrete time, uh, uh, time uh, uh, point, okay? Like Q1, Q2, and so on and so forth. Okay, so this is called time discretization. Now, the main issue for time discretization is that it may not be very efficient way to represent the UAV trajectory over time. The reason is because, let's imagine, right, a UAV hovers at one particular location for a very long time. I mean, you know, it does not move at all, okay, for this period of time. But if you use the equal time discretization, that means that all, you have a many Q1, Q2, and so on and so forth, they're all equal to the same Q, right, which is the hovering location, right, of the UAV. Right? 
this is because the, the number of queues are, are, are going to be our design variable, right, for the trajectory optimization. So this is not very efficient way to represent the UAV trajectory, right, in terms of minimizing, you know, the number of discrete uh, random variable. So we propose another discretization. It's called a past discretization. So in this case, we do not need uh, each interval to have equal time duration. You can have, you know, variable time duration, but of course, now you need to add another dimension, right? Which is the time allocation variable, T1, T2, between uh, the adjacent, uh, you know, you can think of UAV hovering uh, locations, right? Q1 and Q2. So it seems that you have more uh, variables, right? Which is not good, right? But actually you can think about, you know, the previous example, like the UAV hovering scenario. In this case, right? Uh, let's say the UAV, UAV hovers for a period of time, time T, then we can just set T2 equal to T, right? Even T is very large. And then we can just set the two uh, locations at the beginning, and the ending time of this slot, I mean, Q1 and Q2, make them equal to Q, which is the covering location of that UAV. So actually, we can substantially save the number of variables. But in this case, we only need three variables, right, to represent this covering, uh, you know, uh, period for the UAV uh, position. Well, in the time discretization, right, we, we need the much more number of uh, discrete variables that actually scales with the period duration. Uh, of T2. Right? So from this example, we can see actually uh, how to quantize or how to decretize the UV trajectory is a, is a key uh, problem. Now, suppose we already done that, right? We already done the discretization. So now we have all the uh, variables uh, in the, the, for the UV trajectory and the, <clears throat> the resource allocation, they are over discrete time or, you know, or discrete, uh, you know, variable uh, N. And then, uh, you know, we, we want to solve this kind of optimization problem. But this is still difficult to, to, uh, to solve in general. The reason is because uh, usually we have, remember, we have the coupling constraints and also sometimes the objective functions, which is involve both Q and, and R. Right? And usually they, they lead to some highly nonlinear, uh, you know, and non-convex optimization problems. So in this case, how to solve this problem? So the general way is that we use the block coordinate descent approach. That means that we can fix one set of variable, for example, trajectory and optimize the, uh, you know, the communication resource allocation. And then we fix the resource allocation and optimize UA trajectory. And when they iterate and, until convergence, then we can reach a, a, a suboptimal solution for this problem in general, but maybe it's, a, it's quite a satisfactory local optimal. Of this problem. Of course, when we solve each of these uh, problems, that means optimizing Rn with fixed Qn or maximizing Qn with fixed Rn, we still encounter non-convex optimization problem. So in this case, right, we can uh, employ some techniques in optimization, for example, successive convex optimization uh, approximation, SCA. The main idea is then to linearize some uh, non-concave or non-convex functions you know, in the local region as a linear function. And then we linearize this function and make the problem uh, convex, at least at the local points. And so we can proceed uh, using efficient convex optimization techniques to solve them. For example, let's just show you some example, for example, communication rate in terms of trajectory or the minimum speed constraint for UAV and all of this, we can uh, use SCA techniques to linearize uh, these functions. Right, uh, to enable efficient uh, convex optimization. Uh, optimization. Okay, so uh, next I want to just quickly, uh, you know, go through two uh, examples, right? And you can imagine how we can, you know, uh, you can see, you know, physically how we can design the UAV trajectory to optimize their communication. And so these two papers actually, uh, they have a quite high impact in, in this, uh, area, I mean, UAV uh, communications, and they also won some recent awards in, in the attribute communication uh, society. So the first work is, uh, you know, you can think about, right, we have uh, uh, multiple, right, here I only show two UAV base stations, and they want to uh, jointly serve the, you know, some ground uh, user, for example, their IoT sensors, and then, uh, you know, how to jointly design their trajectory and also the communication result, uh, scheduling with the ground user, right? Such as the maximum throughput, right? So here, you know, it's so called the maximize the minimum average rate of each ground user. 
uh, you know, is, is set out as our objective function. Now, the, here, the main challenge is that these two UAV may cause interference with each other. Now, you may, you may wonder why now we use also bond of time, like say, you know, you know, transmission, right? Like TDMA, for example, then you can be interference free. But we know, right, that orthogonal uh, multiple access like TDMA is not the optimum, right, way to achieve the, uh, the spectral efficiency, right? So we may need them to, to communicate with the ground user simultaneously, but we have to take care of the interference, right? We have to make sure the interference is, is, a, is a sufficient load. So uh, we can optimize the, you know, uh, the communication through to about, uh, uh, you know, jointly optimizing the UAV trajectory and also the the communication resource allocation. So the optimization problem mathematically is given here. It's very complicated, right? You have communication constraint, you have couple constraint, you have a utility, uh, UAV uh, trajectory constraint. So we can apply the techniques uh, we introduced previously, like discrete uh, discretization and also plot coordinate descent to solve the problem. So here, I just want to show you, right? What are the optimized trajectory of these two UAV? Uh, you can see that right, you know, the user are divided into two clusters and are respectively served by these two UAV. And this trajectory of these two UAV, if you look at carefully, you will find that any given time, right, these two UAV, right, if you look at their distance, is as far as possible. Actually, that's the result of this optimization of trajectory. Why we want the two UAVs there as far as possible from each other is because we want to minimize their interference. So they can use the same time frequency resource block to communicate with two users, and this will improve the spectral efficiency. So this will give us a new approach to deal with the various network interference, which is by you know, designing the UAV trajectory. Okay, and you can also see that the throughput of this, this system actually the improve, okay, improve based the uh, you know the scheduling period for the UAV. The more time given for the UAV to design its trajectory and schedule the transmission with ground user, you get higher average throughput. Now, how to understand this result? Actually, the reason is, is quite intuitive. Now, given more time for the UAV to schedule it, that means that the UAV have sufficient time to visit each of these ground terminal, right? The best location is on top of them, each of them, right? And hovering, right? Then that will get the best channel condition and the highest the throughput. But the problem is that the UAV has to spend some time to move around to visit each ground uh, terminal. And this will consume time. And also what? The delay. That means that you know, each of the ground terminal needs to waste longer time for the UAV come back in the next period to survey, right? They will cause the communication delay. So you can see that there's a fundamental trade-off between throughput of the network and the delay of each user when you design the UAV trajectory. So this is a fundamental trade-off we call the throughput delay trade-off in UAV communication. Another work I want to share with you is about how to model the UAV energy consumption model. Because for UAV communication, uh, you know, is, is the, typically UAV has a limited onboard energy, right? So, you know, as I mentioned previously, the energy efficient design is critical, right, for UAV. Uh, but, you know, if you compare the UAV proportion energy consumption, that means the energy used to, maneuver the UAV around and uh, the communication energy. If you look at the practical you know, UAVs, you will find that the proportion energy is much higher than the communication energy. So this is a very different from traditional energy efficient design in communication system, because usually when we talk about communication energy, this is the main source of the energy consumption. But in UAV communication, actually it's not true. Actually, we can even ignore the communication energy and focus on the much higher proportion energy. But the problem is that for us to study such problem, we need to have a theoretical model, analytical model that is tractable to model the UAV and, uh, power, uh, the consumption over its, uh, for example, its moving speed, right? And such analytical model does not exist, right? Uh, when we first uh, look at this problem. So uh, we, you know, in this works, we first derive the analytical model for UAV, for example, two types of UAV, typical types, one is a fixed wing, the other one is rotary wing. So we derive their energy, their power consumption model versus the UAV speed. And you can see that they have very different behaviors, the power consumption model and the speed. So we derive uh, you know, the, the energy consumption model for the UAV, for the, these two types of UAV. So here I just give you an example, you can see it's very complicated. 
But the main objective for us to, is to define the energy efficiency for UAV communication, which is the, the total throughput, right, of the UAV achieved given this trajectory, this design trajectory, QD, versus the total energy consumption when the UAV follows this trajectory, QD, right? And this defined as the energy efficiency in terms of bits per drawer of uh, UAV energy consumption, okay? But this energy consumption is not communication energy consumption, it's mainly due to the proportion uh, energy consumption for maneuvering uh, the UAV. So we can maximize the energy efficiency and by solving a similar kind of drawing of a UAV trajectory and communication optimization problem. So here, I just want to show you the result. The result is very interesting. That is, this is for the fixed wing UAV. And uh, we find that the, if the UAV want to serve the ground user, okay, and at the same time, achieve the maximum energy efficiency, the bits per drawer, actually the optimal trajectory is this H shape kind of trajectory. That means, the, the fixed wing UAV needs to hover above uh, this ground terminal, but not directly above it because that is not very energy efficient, but actually it hovers above it. And, uh, you know, and also we look at the trajectory avoid some sharp turns, right? Because this is not for, for saving the, uh, the proportion energy, right? So you can see another fundamental trade off in UAV communication will be the communication throughput versus UAV energy trade off. That means you given different energy of the UAVs, actually the trajectory for optimizing the communication throughput will be also a different. So we, in practice, we have to balance between communication throughput and the UAV energy consumption. So here, I just want to point out, right, this, this UAV trajectory optimization problem, uh, you know, can be also, uh, you know, uh, formulated as a, you know, a special case, which is called the UAV placement problem. Right. Well, the idea usually is we place some fixed UAV base stations over a given area, and such as all the users on the ground can be supported. But this problem you can consider as a special case of the UAV trajectory optimization problem. When the, you only deploy the UAV location, but you do not change their location over time, or you don't need to do the trajectory design, but it's just the initial placement optimization. So in this case, we have some new and uh, customized algorithm that can very efficiently to deploy the UAV locations and uh, to minimize actually the number of UAV uh, base stations deployed and, and, and while at the same time uh, covering all the ground users uh, communication performance. I don't think I have much time. So I want to quickly go through uh, the second challenge which is actually the air ground interference. Uh, Mitigation. So in this case, we consider the, the UAV as a user and it needs to communicate with the ground-based station. But the problem is the existing cellular network, most of the cellular base stations, their antennas are, are tilted downwards, pointing to the ground users. So that means that we have only need to use the side lobe of the existing base stations antenna to cover the UAV uh, communication. That will cause some problem, right? For example, the coverage hole problem and so on and so forth. But in this talk, I want to mainly emphasize you know, the, the, the problem that we, we call this, uh, the air ground interference uh, introduced by, uh, by UAV. Now, the, 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 the setup is as follows, right? We have the ground base stations. We're already communicating with the terrestrial users. And then we introduce some new UAV users, okay? As I mentioned that because UAV flies a very high altitude, it's a very high chance to have a line of sight channel right, with the ground base station, then you can think about when one UAV transmits to its, uh, you know, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a base station, right, it will cause a strong interference, right, it will cause strong interference, you know, to all the other, you know, uh, you know users, ground users that using the same frequency, okay? So you can see, all right, this is the, this is the problem. Why? Because you know, traditional cellular network, if you look at terrestrial users, because in the, in, the, in, the, in the terrestrial environment, we have many buildings, right? And the, the signal will uh, decay, the signal power will decay uh, very fast over distance, right? So this is actually in, in today's cellular network, we can reuse the frequency, the same frequency over, you know, uh, different cells, as long as they're sufficiently far apart from the other. Right. But for UAV, because it has a very strong line of sign channel, there's a very little obstacles over the air. So you may have a line of sign channel to many, many 
ground base stations, right? So when it transmits at any given frequency, it may cause a strong interference to many, and some report even hundreds of base stations that may get interfered, right? So this will uh, destroy the existing frequency reuse, uh, you know, um, architecture, right, in existing uh, satellite network. And similarly for the, the other direction, right, when the base station transmit to one UAV, and the UAV may also receive the interference of you know, many, many ground, uh, you know, uh, base stations using the same frequency. So you can see, right, this air ground interference is a very severe issue, right? If you cannot solve it, then, uh, you know, the future wireless network cannot integrate UAV efficiently. Okay, so there are many techniques that we propose, right, to solve this problem. Okay, um, but here I think I do not have time to go through all of them. So maybe I'll just pick up one or two uh, to highlight, okay, uh, the techniques, right? What are the main ideas behind such techniques? So one technique we introduce is called cooperative interference cancellation. It's a very interesting idea. The idea is that, okay, we already know, right? The interference will receive, uh, for example, right? It will, uh, let's say the UAV transmit, right? It will cause interference to many co-channel base stations. Okay, but how to cancel such interference, right? Traditional ways in satellite networks, they are using two techniques. One is called COMP, the other one is called NORMA. The COMP stands for coordinated, coordinated multi-point transmission. I mean, all the ground-based stations, right? They cooperatively, jointly decode and encode the signals from all the users, right? regardless if it's UAV or ground user. And such as their interference can be, their mutual interference can be resolved. But it's not very practical in this scenario. Why? Because as I said, a UAV can contaminate many, many ground-based states. That means if you want to cancel such interference using COMP, you need to engage hundreds of base stations They work together, but it's not practical. Uh, if you consider the practical delay and cost uh, consideration, right? You cannot engage such large-scale COMP. Another technique, uh, existing technique called NORMA, non-autogonal multiple access. That means that uh, when the ground base station received interference from UAV, because the UAV signal typically is strong because the line sign channel, it can decode the UAV signal, the interference first, and then cancel such interference. It's also not very practical in this scenario because the UAV, when the, send, the UAV sends signal, it will contaminate many, many ground base stations and their received power for the UAV signal, right, can vary from tens of dBs. Right. So that doesn't mean that you know all the ground base stations can use NORMA to cancel the UAV interference. Okay, so it's also NORMA also does not work. So the cooperative interference cancellation is a new approach. Actually, the idea is to explore that in existing satellite network, a frequency is reused only by selected right, uh, base stations. That means there are many idle base stations that do not use this frequency because of frequency reuse. So we can leverage those base stations because they are idle for that frequency to decode the UAV interference, right? And then send the decoded interference to the nearby uh, base station which has been uh, interfered by the UAV. I mean, they have a, you know, another ongoing terrestrial user using the same frequency. So this way, uh, of course, there are many extensions of it, but you know, by using this idea, we can easily cancel the UAV interference in the satellite network for both uplink and now, another very useful approach is also to explore the trajectory design for UAV. But in this case, it's a little bit different from the previous trajectory design. Because here, my main purpose is to design the UAV trajectory to avoid the interference okay, in, the, in the network. Because remember that UAV will receive uh, interference from also from the, the terrestrial base station. So you can see, right, this is the, the radio map, which will give you the signal to interference noise distribution over the space. Then given such a map, then we can design the UV trajectory to only, uh, to, 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 you know, um, to, this, uh, to maximally, you can think about travel through the regions that you have a high signal to interference noise ratio, or that means low interference regions. Right? So when this case, when we design the UV trajectory is to bypass the, the high interference regions, right? So you, by this way, we can also, uh, you know, uh, help the UAV to improve, uh, you know, the SNR performance, right, in the satellite network. Let me more robust to the ground to air, you know, interference. But you may wonder, right, where this radio map come from, right? Who who give us such information, right? It cannot 
you know, if at the initial uh, setup, right, you, you have no knowledge over the space, right, the, the SNR distribution. So we have to learn such radio map. So how to do it? We have to explore UAV mobility. So you can think of UAV as a moving sensor over space. But the problem is the UAV has its own communication uh, requirement and also, uh, you know, the, you know, the flight uh, mission requirement. So it cannot, let's say, freely explore this, this, uh, this the three, 3D space to get such information to construct the radio map. So there's a trade-off between uh, the radio map, uh, you know, construction and also the UAV self-navigation for optimizing its own objective, right? So this framework, we can model as a reinforcement learning. So we can use the deep neural network, uh, deep learning techniques to, uh, you know, to solve this problem, that means to find the optimal balance between the UAV navigation for the radio map construction and its own uh, mission uh, 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 requirement, uh, uh, you know, achieve. Okay, so there are other many techniques like massive MIMO, you know, the the swarm UAV communication. But I think I do not time will not have time to go through that. So I just want to uh, quickly conclude my talk. So I I hope you can get some. Uh, a picture about you know, how to you integrate UAV into future wise network like 5G and beyond. So we imagine that there's a, you know, in the future, there's a new area of internet of drones, right? That which is, you can think of not, it's, a, it's, a, it's not just internet of things, IoT, you can also think about, we have more and more UAVs over the air. So uh, we have, you know, the, the new age of internet of drones are IOD. And there are two types of UAV application. One is UAV as a terminal, Okay, moving terminal, right? We call the cellular connected UAV. The other one is to use UAV as a mobile base station or relay or data collector, which is called the UAV assisted uh, communication. And there are many challenges. So here I, I'm only highlight the two, I think um, crucial ones from the communication perspective. One is the joint trajectory placement and the communication design for UAV. The other one is how to handle the UAV to ground or area to ground interference uh, issue. Of course, there are much more to be investigated right, from other aspects, for example, safety and security issues for UAV and how to integrate UAV uh, satellite network with the future satellite, for example, a low earth orbit REO uh, uh, network and how to make energy replenishment efficient right, for UAV, such as we can uh, increase their endurance time uh, over the air and how to integrate uh, communication sensing and how to integrate the communication sensing can help UAV uh, 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 to help improve their, not just communication performance, but other aspects like safety and security and so on and so forth. So here in the last slides, I listed some of the directions I think are quite still interesting uh, for uh, you know, future work. And due to a time constraint, I may not be able to uh, to go through all of them. So I may li just leave it uh, here. And uh, if any question, I'll be glad to address. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for your attention. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Professor Zhang, for a wonderful presentation. The intention uh, that, uh, that this is the, the seminars are primarily uh, to help students and professionals to pursue research as well as development. I think these are great questions and great uh, uh, directions for research. Um, there was a one, yeah, there were some questions and I, I will read them and then uh, probably you can explain. One is, the first question was about some standards that people talked. I already answered them in terms of IEEE 1920.2 for ad hoc, net, ad hoc network of drones. Uh, are, there, is, are there any other things that you want to add? Like for example, satellite-based communications, are there any standards that uh, we can suggest? I think uh, they're still ongoing. Okay, so 3GPP uh, are still interested in the so-called area uh, users. Uh, but of course, now currently the limitation uh, uh, for application is mainly due to the safety concern. Uh, actually, we you know there's, there's a lot of areas that have forbidden uh, you know, UAV uh, access. That, that's the main issue. So I think, um, in my view, I mean, there will be... Um, I think there should be some new application that the drone delivery actually is a very promising one recently. If you think of a large scale application, okay, and think uh, in, in particular in China and the, there's some, some companies are very interested uh, to using the drone uh, delivery package, uh, you know, uh, to replace the, the, the more costly manual delivery. 
So this application, I think, may eventually, if I say successful, demonstrate it right with some initial prototype, and there will be a very important driving force for UAV uh, application uh, integration in the future uh, cellular network. And so, in my opinion, this this could be one main driving force. Well, the other, uh, uh, I think that uh, direction will be the the satellite uh, communication, but especially if we have a low Earth orbit, a uh, uh satellites, uh, you know, the Starlink, you know, this this uh, driven by these uh, activities. So uh, I think uh, you know, in the future, it will be a highly integrated air ground network. I mean, you will have the you know the, the REO, and that will enable the the ground coverage in some remote area. Okay. But if you think about the link capacity for uh, satellite, right, it will still be limited, right? Especially if in the future you have more and more users on the ground. So we still may still need the UAV as a relay, you know, and in some cases to cover a certain area. That means that, you know, the satellite to UAV and the UAV to, to the ground users. And of course, on the other hand, you can also think of UAV as a new type of user, right, that can support it by. Uh, the satellite, right? So you, you can think of both ways. I, I think from this talk, you can sense, right, that UAV can be used as a relay, and UAV can also use as a mobile terminal, right? So from two aspects for any application, you can think about these two aspects. So I think this uh, integration with the satellite, satellite and the UAV uh, could be also very promising direction to uh, for the future, uh, you know, uh, UAV uh, application. So from standardization, I would say 3GPP uh, will, will, will is still uh, continue uh, still uh, continuing to work on that. And you also we also have seen some other aspect actually you know like Wi-Fi you know there is also some uh, new initiatives right that is I want to you know improve the the UAV uh, connectivity. I think we are we are still uh, uh, you know waiting to see uh, more such uh, you know uh, progress yeah in in terms of standardization and uh, actual. Uh, system implementation. Thanks. There is, yeah, there is one more question. Uh, that's the last uh, uh, in the chat. Uh, the question is about uh, about uh, the num as the number of UAVs increase, the optimization must be more challenging or more difficult. So the question is, in your opinion, what are the main unique challenges for multi UAV trajectory optimization, especially those intrinsically different from single UAV? Okay, so I think the first challenge will be the in terms of optimization variable. Remember, I have this QT, right? Which is is actually you can think of it as a vector, right? Each of these entry actually is the it specifies one UAV's location over time. So you have more UAVs, right? Then there will be more design variables, right? You have more variables to optimize, and usually they have a constraint, right? For example, the UAV, each UAV need to avoid collision with the nearby. UAV. That means that you know you need to add a mathematical constraint that at any given time, any two UAV, the distance need to be small, uh, to be greater than certain threshold. Okay, and the interference will be another issue. If you have more UAVs, then you have to, no matter UAV used as a terminal or UAV as a base station, in either case, you have to consider the interference issue because there will be more interference source right from the ground and also from the UAVs. That means that you know if we optimize communication performance, you have signal to interference ratio. But if your interference is due to many many source, actually that the problem becomes even more difficult to solve. So from my perspective, I think the main challenge will be one is the in terms of the optimization complexity, right, which increases with the number of uh, UAVs. It may not be linearly; it can be even uh, you know polynomial or you know even uh, you know exponentially. And the other, the other will be the interference issue. If I have more UAVs, then the interference issue becomes more complicated. Yeah, to we'll solve. Yeah, this is my my yeah. uh, point of view. Thanks. Yeah, thank you, Professor Zhang. I think uh, again, uh, thanks for the wonderful presentation. And there are many questions, as you see in the last slide of uh, that Professor Zhang has uh, provided. Uh, yeah, uh, and then um, to we are trying to wrap up the presentation. Uh, it is uh, to, to just to conclude. Uh, this is a seminar series from Vehicular Technology Society, and subject matter experts like Professor Zhang will be uh, will be uh, will be giving these lectures. And next week it will be on uh, May first. It happened to be Monday. Uh, the time is uh, uh, nine nine Eastern time, uh, nine EST. And you will get if you are registered, you will get an email. And here is a 
um, the more details about uh, society and we invite if you are not a member you now we invite you to uh, become a member of IEEE VTS um, then um, yeah this concludes our presentation and we look forward to seeing you all again in the uh, in the next uh, month meeting on 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 May 1st thank you all thank you professor okay thanks thanks to all yeah for attending this this webinar yeah thank you bye bye